Okay, this was Joe's idea, and it turned out to be a good idea. This is a spoiler that goes on the back of the car, and uh, it fits down on the back, and I'm going to rivet it right across here to the back, and I put the tail lights in it, and I think that turned out pretty nice. And this is the first one I built, and I will uh, finish the other one. I've got it started here. That's what it looks like, and the way I do it, this obviously is bent to make it look like a spoiler. Then I come in and put a piece down here in the back, flat. Then I fill in the ends like this. I cut pieces and fill them in and weld them in. Well, the other day I was uh, finishing this one up and I burnt a hole in it a couple places. So I was tacking them back in and I was grinding them down and my grinder burned up. So I had to go get another one. Oh boy. And, uh, yeah, I'm real happy with these I things. like that, uh, yeah. yeah. Turn, turned out nice. And you're gonna do them uh, green, body color? Green, yeah. Hey. Yeah, very cool. Yes, very happy. Okay, we're underneath the car, obviously, and show you what's going on under here and how we did some things. I don't know if you remember back, but we took the axle, and I think it was uh, eight inches out of the middle of it, and then we stuck it together, welded it, and then I put these plates, they go all the way to the back here to secure it, so it's pretty secured. Uh, we used springs, as you can see, uh, elliptical springs here, and come on under it, and I have no problems out here. I just gotta get in it and clean it up and paint the places I missed when it was on the ground. I couldn't get to it. So we come underneath it, and this motor was sitting on a dolly, so I gotta paint the bottom of it. The transmission was the same way and get some touch-up places in here or where I put the jacks when I was working on it. But it's all working good until we get to right here. And I don't know if you can get there and see it, Emil, but this is the shifting arms on the transmission. And what happens when you put a floor shift in it, you have to take these arms and turn them around upside down. Joe was talking about it the other day, and he told me that, and I said, you're right. So before I thought about that, or Joe told me, I would put these braces for the floor in. Now I'm going to have to cut this brace right here and turn these around where I can put the floor shifter in it. And it'll all work once I do that. But eh, it's not a big job. It's just I wish I didn't have to do it. So what I'm doing now, I'm putting, running the brake lines and uh, uh, supporting them where they don't rattle and move. I run it over this uh, transmission mount and put a piece of rubber in here for it to go through where it didn't rub against anything. And come all the way to the back and went back to the uh, back, went out to the uh, disc brakes on the outside. And uh, it's just little stuff. Last night, I put the fuel line in, and because of the way I had to run it, I run it up here and like this. Well, I took a hose and sliced it and wrapped it around it where this is up against the metal, this is against the metal, and this is against the metal. Won't rub the gas line into you. Just an extra precaution. I don't know if it would have hurt anything or not, but it's there. It'll stay there. And then another deal I found out when I was putting shocks in, I left one of my sockets on a nut. I can get it out now. Mm. And I'm coming underneath and cleaning it like last night. I got the wire brush and cleaned all this up and uh, everything. And I've got some stuff here. These braces that I put under the floor, I've got to paint them and put the shifter in. I got about a day underneath it. Yeah, I'll have a day underneath it. Put the brake light switch, hook it up, and I'll have it all done underneath. Okay, okay we're down to the final little nitpicking stuff. We managed to get the shifter in it. Today, it took us about six hours to design the shifter, figure out how to do it, build it, 
and go from there. This shifter, I don't know what it's for, but it fits flat on the floor. It's a three-speed shifter. So we put it on, put it in the car where it was supposed to be, and if it was where it was supposed to be on the left side of the transmission, it came up right here through the steering wheel. This is where the drive shaft comes. So we had to put it on the right side of the transmission, which is the wrong side. So now everything's working and all that. And this is a Hurst shifter that uh, I found. And who would ever thought I'd use a three-speed shifter again? But there it is. So uh -huh. remember, we moved it to that side of the transmission. So we're going to go up now, and I'll show you how it was done. We're under the car and as said when we were up top we had the shifter most of the time goes to the left side of the transmission. In this case we couldn't get it over here because remember it went through the steering wheel. So we cut a hole in the floor, moved it to the right side of the transmission, then we, uh, and I'm going to give credit now where credit's due. Joe came up with this idea, this was Joe's idea. He uh, showed me what he wanted, I built it, and we installed it, and it works perfect. But anyway, we put the shifter here, and then we built these rods. We took uh, rod ends, high ends, and put them on the end. We built, let me go back up here. There's a tube that runs from here over to here, then a tube on the outside of that that pivots and when you shift gears, this tube on the top side, on the outside, pivots on the tube running through the middle. I welded a bolt in the end of the tube, and that's what holds the little tube in place. Okay, then you shift gears here, and uh, it moves this outside tube. Watch again. Watch this tube right here, the silver one. Okay, missed it, but you see how it moves? Yeah. Okay. And uh, and then with uh, the shifter right there, okay. Right, and that shifts to arms over here. What it we've done is move the shifter over here, but at all practical purposes, it's still on this side of the car. Oh wow, that is, that you're right, that is a feat. Yes, it was some engineering went into it, and it works perfect. And uh, I made these, uh, took uh, 5 sixteenths, I think that's what they were, rod ends, and welded them into a piece of tubing. I threaded the tubing, screwed them in, and welded them in. And then the same thing down here, this is where the adjustment is here. We uh -huh. can take this off and unscrew it, okay. screw it back in. I didn't have any left-hand threads, so... I made them solid here, and it would just pull it out. If we have to adjust it right now, everything works perfect. Beautiful, wow. So. Uh, That's exceptional. Yes, and I'm impressed because it looks like somebody else did it. <laughs> <laughs> right on. But you can see it's in neutral now, and then if you put it in gear, it's in, and I think, which one did that push? Okay, this this one is uh, first and reverse. This one second and third. Cool. Yeah. Three speeds of fury. <laughs> yes. So I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. So I'm within a week of driving this thing. Okay. We're close. I got the fuel lines run in it. I've uh, got to bleed the brakes, bleed the clutch, hook up the brake like switch right here and hook up the electric fan to ground which is up 
here someplace. It's tucked away. But anyway, I got to hook up the ground wire for the electric fan, and we're ready to go. Very cool. Four-wheel disc, old-school race car. Huh? Yes. Neat. Yeah. Exactly.